Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 16th of September. Pakistan violates ceasefire along frontier in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Rescue operations gather pace as boat capsizes in southern India. And Taliban revokes ban on Red Cross provides security guarantees. And now for all the details, an Indian Navy helicopter on Monday completed a search mission and found no survivors or bodies in the aftermath of a boat tragedy in Godavari River in southern Andhra Pradesh province. More than 10 people died when a tourist boat carrying 61 people on board capsized in the river. Indian Navy helicopter on Monday completed a search mission and found no survivors or bodies in the aftermath of a boat tragedy in Godavari River in southern Andhra Pradesh province. The Navy said Chetak helicopter has now taken off for next search. More than 10 people died when a tourist boat carrying 61 persons on board capsized in the Godavari River near Devi Patnam in Andhra Pradesh on Sunday afternoon. Authorities have deployed drones, helicopters and deep divers to search for tourists who went missing in the boat incident. Meanwhile, Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Y.S. Jagan Mohan Reddy earlier conducted an aerial survey of the area in East Godavari district where the boat capsized. He later visited a hospital and met the victims who were rescued safely and were being treated. Reddy has announced around $14,000 ex gratia for bereaved families and asked for the complete report on the incident. Pakistan resorted to yet another ceasefire violation along the border in Punch district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Sunday night. Some Indian troops suffered minor injuries in the incident and were undergoing treatment till the last reports came in. Pakistan resorted to ceasefire violation along the line of control in Punch district of India's Jammu and Kashmir with intensive shelling on Sunday night. Indian troops suffered minor injuries in the ceasefire violation which was reported in Balakot sector of Poonch and were undergoing treatment till the last reports came in. The latest heavy shelling by Pakistan came a day after school children in Rajori district were sent back home as soon as their school began due to heavy exchange of fire between Indian and Pakistani troops on Saturday along the Manjakot sector. Wearing uniforms, the children were seen taking shelter under a rock, waiting for their parents to pick them up. When the morning shelling started, the radio had to be able to get to the radio. They said that you can send your children to the house. We called their parents so that the children don't play in the road, so they have to take care of their children. Relations between Islamabad and New Delhi, already hostile, have been further strained over India's decision last month to revoke the special status of its Jammu and Kashmir region. The troops of the nuclear armed neighbours often exchange fire along the de facto border in Jammu and Kashmir. Moving on, the Indian diaspora in UK held a protest in Birmingham against the ongoing anti-India propaganda on the Kashmir issue. They hailed the Indian government's move to revoke the special status of its Jammu and Kashmir region. The Indian diaspora in the UK recently held a protest at the Victorian Square in Birmingham against anti-India propaganda by Pakistan in the aftermath of the abrogation of Jammu and Kashmir's special status. The demonstrators showed their support for the move by the Indian government and raised slogans in support of the return of Kashmiri Pandit to the valley and carried placards that read abrogation of Article 370 and 35A will integrate Kashmir with India. The demonstrators hailed the decision as a decisive step to bring justice to Kashmiri Pandits who were driven out of their ancestral homes from Jammu and Kashmir during 1989 to 1990. 
Rattled by India's move on Kashmir, Pakistan has been battling its narrative on the matter on international platforms, despite many countries having sided with New Delhi's stance that the move is its internal matter. Baloch Human Rights Council Vice President Hassan Hamdam recently said that under Pakistan's illegal occupation, there has never been democracy in Balochistan. He also highlighted the issues of enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings being committed by Pakistani security forces in Balochistan. Vice President of Baloch Human Rights Council or BHRC Hassan Hamdam recently said that under Pakistan's illegal occupation, there has never been democracy in Balochistan. Speaking in Geneva, Hamdam blamed Pakistani army operates with impunity in Balochistan and uses brute force to muzzle dissenting voices. He said that Islamabad is not concerned about Baloch people and with its so-called development projects, it has been exploiting natural resources in Balochistan. Baloch have no say on their resources. They have been exploited uh, by the central government and uh, the, the resources of Balochistan are taken from Balochistan and, you know, uh, uh, and taken to cent uh, under the central government and used in other part of Pakistan, other part of Pakistan. So they are not concerned about the Baloch people for de their development, but they are, this is the biggest issue there. Hamdam said that instead of bringing economic opportunities, the multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan economic corridor project has only brought death and destruction in Balochistan. He also raised concerns over the issues of enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings being committed by Pakistani security forces in Balochistan. And news from Afghanistan, the Taliban has revoked its ban on the International Committee of the Red Cross in Afghanistan after almost six months. The Red Cross has operated in Afghanistan for over 30 years and is primarily focused on providing assistance to the war victims. The Taliban has asked the International Committee of the Red Cross or ICR to resume its activities in Afghanistan after banning it for nearly six months. Head of the ICRC in Afghanistan welcomed the renewal of security guarantees by the Taliban on Twitter and hailed it as the acknowledgement of the humanitarian principles. Taliban imposed a ban on the ICRC and the World Health Organization in April, saying the organizations were carrying out suspicious activities during vaccination campaigns and not sticking to the declared missions. The ICRC has operated in Afghanistan for over 30 years and has been primarily focused on providing assistance to war prisoners and war victims. The World Health Organization has also carried out a vaccination campaign in Afghanistan, one of the last countries in the world where polio is endemic. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. Bangladesh has been fighting an uphill battle against dengue this year. The total number of confirmed cases of dengue has risen to 80,000 in the country since January. A total of 9,470 cases of dengue were reported in Bangladesh in September, bringing the total number of confirmed cases since January in the country to over 80,567. The figures reported by the Directorate General of Health Services or DGHS under the Ministry of Health on Saturday showed that a total of 77,368 dengue patients returned home after receiving treatment from various hospitals across the country from 1st January to 15th September this year. DGHS said after reviewing 101 deaths, the government's Institute of Epidemiology, Disease Control and Research confirmed 60 dengue deaths so far. The Bangladeshi government has asked state agencies for more coordinated efforts to rein in the outbreak of the disease, which is transmitted by mosquito-borne virus that spreads among humans through its carrier, the Aedes mosquito. Deputy Foreign Minister of Poland unveiled a memorial plague in India's western Kolhapur city at a place which served as a camp for hundreds of Polish refugees who came to India during the Second World War. A group of people from Poland also visited the camp site to commemorate the eight decades old memory.
Deputy Foreign Minister of Poland unveiled the memorial plaque in India's western Kolhapur city at the place which served as a camp for hundreds of Polish refugees who came to India during the Second World War. There were two Polish refugee camps in India, one in the suburbs of Kolhapur in Maharashtra province and another in Jamnagar of neighboring Gujarat province. Apart from barracks, it also included schools, workshops and a Catholic church. A museum is now due to be built on the site containing all photographs and other memorabilia from the camps. Thank you very much. They found a new home and a normal life here. The little Poland was in India, in Kolhapur. My, my compatriots found peace here. They found friends here. They found love here. And we are here today to commemorate this enormous gift of humanity and love that Polish citizens received from the people of India. I remember this. I have photographs of it. That was the entrance to the camp. And I am absolutely touched that you, the, 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 Her Highness went to all this trouble to find it, to restore it, and put it here. It is an honor for us that somebody went to the trouble and I really, I, am, I feel like crying. It is so emotional. This year marks the 80th anniversary of the outbreak of World War II when Germany invaded Poland from the west and 17 days later, Soviet Russia invaded Poland from the east, which began the bloodiest war of all time in the history of humanity. Plastic pollution poses significant threat to the entire environment leading to land, air and water pollution. In a bid to contribute in making the environment pollution free, a forest officer in eastern India has created a beautiful garden using waste plastic bottles and rubber tires. A forest range officer in eastern India has transformed the exterior of his office, giving it a new look by creating a beautiful garden using waste plastic bottles and rubber tires. The garden of Papan Mohanta's forest range office has hanging plants made out of 1,100 plastic bottles which are generally thrown after use. Additionally, coloured rubber tire waste are also being used for hanging plants. Mohanta was posted in Pirkata range four years ago and since then he has completely transformed the look of the region with minimum plastic waste lying around and many different flowers blooming in the garden. So this is a good thing. This is a bottle of 1,100 bottles that are hanging here. When we put it in the time, we put it in the time. And now we have to put it in the time, so we have to put it in the time flower. Following Mohanta's initiative, paramilitary camp in the area, schools and other institutions have also started to walk on the same lines. Agami din piti bi dhongswar mukte ke panchate gale, to ei plastic ke no tun hobe rupdi the gale ki hobe kora jai seta ekhante ke sekha niya hoychi. Tebang eta mona hoy gyanu school baabon no kono jagay media matam jide pochar kora jai, eta aro bepak hoy chodye pone. Androne rup. India consumes 12 million tons of plastic every year which includes single-use as well as recyclable plastic, according to a report of Central Pollution Control Board in 2012. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently announced a complete ban on single-use plastic in the country, starting from October 2nd. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Pakistan violates ceasefire along frontier in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Rescue operations gather pace as boat capsizes in southern India. And Taliban revokes ban on Red Cross provides security guarantees. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.